pretty happy she called me wonderful. I yeah, think I'm just you Jason, are but you're as wonderful. Well, I mean, you're just Jason. But uh, I think we do have a very good match on our hands. I you know yesterday in the Group A match, no one wanted versus Penta. I felt like Penta was coming in like the clearer, better team. In that one, I just a little bit more coordinated than unwanted. I feel like this one's going to be pretty close, though. It has to go three maps between these two teams, just because LDLC I see more of like a payload kind of team, more strategy oriented, where Mouse Sports is going to be more skirmishy. I mean, beating Fnatic on Lijong Tower when Fnatic has an all star lineup, and we haven't seen it just yet, but they have a special switch around in terms of roles yeah. as well. That's tough to beat, but to be able to do that is very difficult. Well, I'm kind of confused why LDLC even picked Lijong Tower. It's like that's the one map that Mouse got yesterday against right. Fnatic, and then you come in here and you pick it. It's like, well, we saw, you know, Mouse Sports was not able to get anything going on King's Row against Fnatic. Like maybe go back to that, but. You know, they go with Li Cheng Tower. I guess they feel pretty confident in their play there. Maybe it came down to, like, the least of all evils. It was kind of like a map that, like, yeah, we know they're strong on, but we know we're really weak on other maps. So yeah, we, we don't really know, through. right? Exactly. So it's kind of like, we'll play something we know they're good at, but we're not that bad at kind of thing. Yep, so it'll be uh, Mouse on defense here first. Uh, they'll be running you know, Diva, Roadhog, Ryan as the tanks. Uh, you'll be seeing, actually, uh, Zenyatta on for Burex. Uh, which I, I think we've seen a lot of good Zenyatta play during this tournament thus far. I feel like he's a hero that can kind of... I, I feel like he needs to make a little bit of a comeback into the meta because when you're dealing with these tanks and you know, Reaper kind of out without the you know nano boost and the Death Blossom combination, mm. I feel like you need Zenyatta for that damage to burst these tanks down. And when you have like a Lucio and an Ana together, it's kind of like, well, you're not really going to die to them, but you're not really necessarily going to kill anyone that's trying to flank you. But like Zenyatta can do just that. He can kill the flanker. He can deal with them extremely quick, especially if it's like a Tracer. If you hit a Discord headshot, you just pretty much take her out of existence. But in the meantime, they're starting to push up. They're trying to get in towards this underpass. And so for the defending side, should have enough damage to break any sort of, you know, shield coming their way. And LDLC is pretty much responding with the same exact composition. Except yeah. the Zenyatta change. Yeah, except on the side of LDLC, you'll actually see Ana. So Cabal will be running Ana for the offensive side. And see, just trying to put some damage down. It's interesting, Mouse gave up that top very quick. And it looks like you're going to see LDLC just go and try and take that high ground now. Yeah, pretty standard. There's no point to contest the high ground when you can easily lose a fight there, just be getting get, uh, getting caught off guard. But it's going to come down to the Lucio speed boost. They're going to have at a clown. And then the healing that you have Cabal will be able to do from the backside because he's not going to be interrupted. There's no one's been giving him any pressure. He can get so much more healing done than the side of Mouse can do. On oh, Izube there with a nice hook landing it onto the enemy Diva, and now it's going to be LDLC pushing straight up. That Roadhog hook has been so effective. I feel like that's kind of what the meta is really kind of starting to turn into. Break the shield, get the Roadhog hook down, and see the nano boost coming in there for LDLC. It's going to be Pushing forward is Ube, and you see it's going to be Mesomorphs. He's actually going to be the one that gets Nano Boost, but here comes in the Transcendence from the side of Maus, and see it's not able to keep all of them up, though. Kills coming in for LDLC, and they're going to invest a Sound Barrier into this fight as well. So double support Ultimates just to make sure they can hold on to this payload, considering LDLC were the ones to actually push up into this one, and still see Clancy towards the backside. He's not really being attacked at all. His Tactical Visor are ready to go, and just like that, on the first attack, even though it lasted a little bit longer than usual, they successfully take the point. What's your thoughts on investing both support ultimates into that fight? I think it just kind of shows they didn't expect the aggression that LDLC was going to throw their way. Like, it's such a heavy investment to do at that first choke point when you didn't already win the first fight and you didn't really look like you had an opportunity to win the first fight. They didn't even try to actually kill LDLC. They didn't force the engagements themselves. Yeah, you really didn't have many people alive. I believe when we saw the sound barrier come in, it was like just two or three people there for the side of Malsports. And you see, it's going to be the attack visor coming in from the side of Mouse. The sound barrier comes in from LDLC. So just trying to sustain through this. It's going to be Swoosh, though. They'll take out Metamorphosis. So you're going to see both Reinhardt's down for each respective team. And it's going to be Clanton still putting down some nice shots here as Soldier, but he gets pushed <laughs> by D.Va. Oh, that Helix Rocket ends up taking himself out there. It's pretty unfortunate. A little emote there from Burex waving hello. It's going to be Mouseforts winning that fight. Honestly, that was not a bad start to LDLC for the fight because Meta, he actually went on the high ground with D.Va and he knocked off a seal and one other. So he kind of like forced a fight in LDLC's favor. Problem was that because LDLC invested like quite a few ultimates into pushing that fight, they actually didn't have like the counter Earth Shutter to stop a seal. So he got a good Earth Shutter off and they're able to win the fight off the back of that. But now with three ultimates ready to go, LDLC should be able to take the high ground away from them, especially when they're not even being challenged out on. And somehow Logic is caught out without even near his team. Nah, it's a fantastic play there. It's going to be Clanton up top with the Nano Boost and the Soldier Ultimate. He's able to get the enemy Soldier up from the high ground. And now you figure they're going to be able to push the payload at least underneath the bridge. And then maybe you see Mouse come and contest it one more time. But see all the engagements going in favor of LDLC. Good ult combination there. 
Mal's coming in this next fight. They'll have a Sound Barrier and they'll have a Diva ult and potentially the Soldier ultimate as well. They're going to fight this. What was so odd though was that Logix was, he's Soldier, he's extremely fast, but he got caught out of position, not with his team. Really confusing. It caused him to lose this much distance, but you can still see the, uh, the Reinhardt Shield speed sticking up. A good actual position out of Finzi just to protect his Zenyatta who got hooked in. Bergs is going to stay alive. And with that Descador still being used, they should be able to take some kills, but somehow, the Diva ultimate comes in, picks up one, Mesmorphus gets a second, and the payload is still moving. <laughs> the one Diva ult actually just ends up on top of the bridge near absolutely nobody, but uh, Finzi is going to get knocked out of his mech. He's going to get pinned. He's going to drop pretty fast. So it's LDLC putting together a really good offensive effort here, and they're coming into this next one. They're going to have that nano boost plus soldier ult ultimate combination again. And they haven't really been stopped this entire time. No, right? they've they, been they, like pretty smooth. They like died once after the initial first checkpoint when they actually went for the fight themselves knocking off the high grip. But since then, it just seems to be they're reading into the mouse sports. They're catching people out of position every time. And Mesomorphosis has been going ham on his Reinhardt, getting quite a few kills. I think he's actually leading his team in eliminations at the moment. There's a tactical visor there, but he's coming back through. And you see it's going to be Clanton just laying down a ton of damage here, but not able to pick anybody up. He's actually going to be forced back. And you see the power of D.Va's defense matrix there, just eating a ton of those shots. Gonna be swoosh now on Roadhog, just trying to lay damage down from above. Nice hook there onto Ube. It's gonna force back LDLC, and I feel like this is the really first good defensive hole that Mouse has had. Yeah, I think Mouse read into that really well too. Considering they were struggling to, to read how LDLC was attacking and read the aggression thrown at them, to have the Diva and the Reinhardt there to completely cancel out and nullify two ultimates with just basic abilities, like that's the dream right there. To not have to use any ultimates to stop two from being used on the other side and win the fight, and now they're starting to rack up some ultimates with the Transcendence. Tactical Visor, and even the Earth Shatter back up. Yeah, it's just, I mean, the defense matrix of D.Va, right? When the Soldier Ultimate comes in, it just kind of eats everything up, and it really just kind of negates that entire thing. And you see an Earth Shatter coming in there from the side of Maus, but they're not able to knock down anybody, and now it's going to be the D.Va Bomb coming through the top. What? No! It gets oh. two players! And now you see LDLC, they're going to push straight up. It's going to be Burex. He has the Transcendence, but he's the only one up. He is in a, such a bad spot right now, Jason. He can solve for time, if anything. The thing is, he wants to let his teammates get on the yeah. payload before he pops the Transcendence, just to make sure they can survive this one. And there they go. They're finally going to have this last, last fight happening, but the Transcendence now going down. Do they even have the people alive to hold? Oh, and it's going to be Ube picking up one. The kill's flooding in for LDLC. You see it's going to be an Earth Shatter there towards the end. They knock D.Va back, trying to get the payload close. Here comes in another D.Va ultimate. It's going to be Metamorphosis there to block it, though. It's actually only going to get one there towards the end. It's LDLC with a great offensive first half. I just feel so bad for Mouseports when Mete got a triple kill with the self-destruct because he, like, he didn't thread the needle, but he placed it, like, landing right behind that little bridge, which yeah. caught everyone off guard because they didn't know exactly where it was going to be. Really unfortunate for them, but you have to give credit to LDSC. Considering they lost 2-0 to Misfits, right? And considering Mouse Sports went 2-1 against Fnatic, we kind of expected Mouse Sports to be the better team in this situation. But like finishing with 2-12 left on Dorado, that's no easy feat. Well, I will say, I know I did not catch the first map between Mouse and Fnatic, but I did see the last one, the King's Row, and I mean Mouse did not look very good on the payload map. Mm. So maybe it's something with these payload maps right. that really kind of throws Mouse off. But we'll see what they can get going on offense. For LDLC on defense, it looks like we'll be pretty much seeing the same comp. Uh, Clan probably goes Soldier 76 yet again. I imagine Mal sticks with the same thing. So uh, nothing oh. too out of the ordinary from either team. But man, that is a very good time from LDLC. And LDLC are running a Zenyatta to Cabal. So oh, yeah, previously Mal Sports was doing that, right? Yeah. Uh, with Burks uh, when they're on the defending side. So LDLC are running a composition that's not going to be it's mobile, yes, but you don't have the ability to get away from a team engaging on you. Like, that's kind of the, the big counter to Zenyatta is when you have a loose to the other team that can speed them up and then catch you off guard and position themselves in a way that they can take advantage of you. Um, but it also means that LDSC have a lot more frontline damage in terms of Cabal putting a Discord orb up. But they're going different. Like, they're not going Lucio Zenyatta like we saw uh, Mouse Sports go with. They're going the Ana Zenyatta. So that's a ton of damage. And to me, it kind of says they're confident in their first point hold. Well, I'm going to ask you a two part question. Do you think you need Zenyatta? And then if you do need Zenyatta, which other support do you think he takes the spot of? So I, I don't think they need Zenyatta, to be honest. Like, on the attacking side, they didn't use it. They, did. yeah. they didn't lack on damage. They were killing the targets they were attacking. They didn't have a problem with that. If you were to use it in Zenyatta, though, I would want to say use Lucio to pair with them because that, that combo is just too strong. Like, Zenyatta does so much damage. He basically fills in as, like, a three-fourths of a DPS. And then Lucio can do the extra AoE healing that he's going to need, plus the extra protection for Zenyatta to keep him alive, where Ana all you have is a sleep dart, ideally, to help him. It's going to be Mouse on offense, trying to beat the time of LDLC. LDLC went the entire length of the map. Two minutes plus remaining, and uh, 
Now, we'll see LDLC on defense. They're going to play a little bit further back towards the statue. So it looks like they're going to give up that choke underneath the bridge here to Mal Sports. Do you think they're playing a little bit too defensive? Uh, no, I, I think, I, I, like, when you attack first and you know you have that much time bank left, your your mindset turns into not just, like, holding the first point, but just delaying as long as yeah. you can. As long as you have more time to you finish with, you're going to feel confident coming into the next attack. But I think they're feeling confident when it comes to these six-on-six -six skirmishes. You can already see Mouse Force is trying to get around towards the backside. LDS are already there, already prepared, without even a loose to help speed them to get him in that position. Yeah, it's two big kills coming from LDLC at the beginning of this fight. Clanton's going to take out Burex. Now you see Finzi, he's going to have to back up. It's a good first hole from LDLC. And also a, a reason they may be playing a little bit further back is because they don't have that Lucio to get out. You know, right. They yeah. need to disengage. They exactly. can't get out of that choke. And underneath that bridge would be a pretty bad spot to get caught. Exactly, yeah. That, you can't you can't disengage when there's a Lucio on the enemy team and you don't have one. But they seem to have the damage they needed. Like, honestly, great position out of Mesomorphosis is to keep his shield up to protect from Swoosh hooking anyone in. But they're going to be looking to push through yet again. Logic is still trying to hammer away from the back. So they're trying to get that damage down that they need to force an engagement. But LDS aren't even giving them the opportunity. They're not allowing them to have like a hook to hit. They're not allowing them to really eat too much damage or take too much damage on their side um, to actually give them the engagement they want. Yeah, and it's going to be Logic's with the tack visor. We'll see if they use this here as uh, just trying to push the payload up to this first checkpoint. Now it's going to be LDLC engaging in the fight. They're actually going to land a bigger shatter. It's going to be Mesomorphosis. Nano boosted as well. He's going to take out Azrael, and Swoosh is going to drop from the hands of Mete. And you see, it's going to be LDLC winning this fight. It's going to be Mouse backing up yet again. So another good hold from LDLC. They hold on to the Diva ultimate and the Soldier ult as well. So LDLC looking in a pretty good spot. It, it, so Mouse's response to Mesmorphosis being nano boosted with the Reinhardt was to nano boost the own Reinhardt, a seal. But the problem is it still got charged and then he got focused down by Logics plus the Discord Orb. Or, uh, yeah, plus the Discord Orb, which helps so much in terms of a nano boosted target. So he got nano boost, but he didn't do anything with it because of the great control that LDLC has. So they didn't really invest that many ultimates into it to actually win the fight. And their self destruct comes in and kills Burix somehow. And again, LDLC are winning this fight. Yeah, and that is a big kill to take Burix out at the beginning of that fight. Ana does such a good job just healing these tanks. And once you get her out of the equation, it makes it a lot easier for LDLC to take control and mouse. Going to lose this one, but they do have some ultimates coming into the next one. So they'll have the whole hog, they'll have the sound barrier, and they have the D.Va ult on the side of LDLC. You have nothing up right now, and it does not look like you're going to get anything going into this next fight. Yeah, I, I, ideally this should be a fight that Mouse Sports wins, right? Because LDLC has absolutely nothing. I guess it comes down to who, how long that uh, Mouse Sports Charge Siege is one. Because obviously they're trying to focus on the shield. They're trying to DC D.Va to allow Logix to actually have more damage with like a Nano Boost and potentially a Tactical Visor, but they haven't had the opportunity just yet. Yeah, and here comes the Sound Barrier in from Mouse for the fight that they absolutely need to win here. The D.Va Ultimate not going to get anything. It's going to be Cabal getting an early first pick there. Swoosh though able to tank out Clown. So kills just being exchanged from both teams and Logic. You just see the firepower that Soldier 76 has now, and they're actually going to get a big hook there on a Cabal. Now, though, looks like they're going to have to back up, reset a little bit. They only have three players alive, Mouse, and Simete just trying to stay alive, trying to earn his mech back behind the payload, just wasting a ton of time. He's going to drop. So now it looks like you're going to see Mouse Sports just advance the payload here, but Swoosh gets put to sleep towards the end, and Clanton's actually going to use his tack visor here, trying to pick up some kills. He gets a nano boost as well, and it's going to be Mesomorphs is able to get to. Things are turning bad for Mouse Sports here. And when they're overtime, Earth starts to come in. It takes Clanton down towards the backside, but there's no follow up. The charge comes in to actually save his life, and the trans is going to be popped just to put insult to injury. And I don't see any way Mouse Sports is going to come back from this one. LDLC are going to put on a first point hold here on Dorado and go 1 0 up in the series. That is shocking. Did not see that happening. LDLC came out on fire in our first map here against Mouse Sports. Really, that was a dominant performance. It, it was a little bit too dominant, which kind of uh, scares me, actually, because we've heard a lot of rumors yeah. about LDLC. Like, we've heard some of the teams here that, you know, already qualified have actually been struggling against them. LDLC have been taking some maps against some of these top teams. Um, I actually expect them to beat Misfits, or to at least put on a really good show against them, but unfortunately they lost 2-0. I like though the Zenyatta pick. I feel like that was a huge thing for them. Yeah, I feel like the Zenyatta helped with the nano boost to target. Yeah, right. And, and the fact that you you see a giant purple orb over someone's head, your entire team knows who's they're, who they're going to focus, and they can kill that target right away. Like every time he discorded, I feel like he's making a call to his team because I was watching him, and then everyone would attack that target and kill it instantly. Yeah, and I mean it just gives you the upper hand in the fight. And I feel like the, the one that you need to get out of the equation, like they they were doing a lot putting the orb on the Reinhardt. But I feel like D.Va, like when you have Soldier 76 and you have that ultimate, like if you use it, we saw Logic like get into a good position. It's like 
once Diva's out of the equation, you just pop that thing right away. Right. Because if she's still in, it's like that, it pretty much negates everything that's going to happen with that. And, and the hardest part about being a soldier is like finding the right opportunity for it when there's like no Reinhardt shield and there's a D-suited D.Va. I think, um, I think Logix just didn't really have the angles he necessarily wanted to. I think Clanton took advantage of different positioning. Like on Dorado, when they're pushing towards second phase, he got on the high ground, right? Caught Logix yeah. off guard and Burrix off guard when he's on the Zenyatta. Because he was trying to look for different angles to attack. He wasn't trying to attack from behind his Reinhardt shield when he knows there's a Reinhardt a Diva he has to contend with. Where Logix was more about sitting back and just kind of using his front line to sit behind. Yeah, well, we saw a few times when Mouse was on offense, Logic would get to the statue and he'd have the soldier ult, but like there's nowhere right. to use it. I mean, the, the guys on LDLC, they were playing behind the statue, behind cover, and then they had Diva there as well. And you know, Diva just stayed alive for such a long time. There was really no great opportunity to use it. Yep. And by the time he did use it, the other side, they had the sound barrier, transcendence. It was just uh, very well played from LDLC. And they were one map away from knocking out Mouseworth. I feel like that would be a huge shock here in our early morning match. It's nice to actually see the, the side of LDLC because uh, they talked about the deaths that, you know, Cloud and Cabal kind of being um, like the, the core of the team, uh, one from Overwatch Kings for, for Cloud and Cabal coming from Melty. Um, they actually are both Lucio players, like main Lucio players back in the day. And yet they've kind of adapted and switched things around a little bit. So you got Clown on Ana, you've got Cabal playing Zenyatta, where you can be really, um, really strong for a team. I love how you put it, like, adapted to play something else. I feel like if I'm the Lucio <laughs> player of a team and they're like, hey, you want to play Soldier? I'd be like, yeah. Yeah, I'll, yeah, I'll course, play. Yeah. yeah, of course. Yeah, it's like it's like I, I, maybe I like, not seen Lucio. I feel like that wasn't really a tough com conversation to have. <laughs> like, hey, look, you know, you're playing Lucio. Like, do you want to play like Ana or like Zenyatta? It's like, uh, I don't know. Like, I'm really come. No, I, I definitely will. <laughs> look at, look at uh, Nevix on Misfits. Yeah, he's yeah. a Lucio player. And then like, hey, we need a damage. Like, yeah, I'll do it. I'll do it. <laughs> look, look at Envy. It's like Harry Hook. It's like, yeah, uh, I'm Lucio. Back then, oh. I'll do it. I'll play. It. Oh yeah, sure. I can play a little bit of Soldier. Oh, by the way, I'm just crushing everybody. <laughs> it's like, <laughs> our second map. Be Hollywood between LDLC and Mouse Sports. It'll, who will be on defense? I can't see. They, they zoom so far away, Jason. My contacts are so dry in the morning, I can't see. Okay, it'll be <laughs> Society of Mouse yep. on defense here to kick things off. They'll be. Uh, they'll actually bring in a Zarya here, so at least at the start, does not look like we'll see a D.Va from the side of Mouse. What is your thoughts on that? Uh, I think maybe they're... Oh, okay, so w when the meta comes out, or people see the meta being developed, and they kind of see, like, what's the strongest heroes, they just they just play it, and they try to, like, learn how to make the comp yeah. work. But at this point, now being down 1-0, you're kind of like, well, forcing a demon of composition, like we saw with Penta, isn't working. Let's just go back to what we know and put the Zarya back in and play around that. Right, well, yeah, Penta was basically saying they just did not feel comfortable right. playing the D.Va, so they, they stuck with Zarya. Now, we'll see Mouse go with Zarya here. Now, LDLC obviously still has some time to lock in who, who they're going to run, so... Uh, we'll talk a little bit more about that once we actually know who they're going to have. Uh, Logic will be running the Soldier 76 yet again. We do not see a Zenyatta on the side of Mouse. They'll be going with Lucio and Ana. Now, on the side of LDLC, I expect, yep, Kamal's going to change. He's going to go Ana, so you're going to see... Huh, so that's interesting. So, yeah. Clown played the Ana last game on Dorado. Oh. But Cabal is playing the Zenyatta, so it actually looks like Cabal is like, or Clown's like the main Lucio player, and Cabal will just kind of fill the support that yeah. they need. That's really interesting. And also to point out uh, for you guys at home, Mouse Sports actually chose this map. So after getting stomped on Dorado, they went into another payload map. Which, albeit hybrid, but payload nonetheless. Which is odd because they they, they did not play very well right. on the, the payloads yesterday, and they won Li Zhang Tower. So. Uh, maybe they, they, they just feel like, you know, they, they don't want this to be like a last map. You see uh, Logic's going to get an early pick there. So that's pretty much going to stall out the push from LDLC. I believe that was a Roadhog hook coming in. And then you saw Logic able to finish off that player. So Swoosh getting the hook. Logic finishing off the kill. Now LDLC is going to have to stall out on their push. I actually want to keep a close eye on Finstein just in terms of how well he can keep his energy charged. Zarya's really struggling when you have like a D-Venu team because you eat the fire strikes, and a lot of teams are becoming more aware of how to stop and prevent a D uh, Zarya from actually getting a lot of charge up. And for the most part, he's been sitting around 30, 40 on my screen, but that's not where you really want to be. You want to be able to spike up a little bit higher to do that damage, to really be that threat to the D.Va player, Meta, on the side of LDLC. Yeah, and uh, the side of Malice has to be careful because Ube is getting free reign to land these hooks. If he just picks up one, could swing things in their favor, but it's going to be Malice picking up the first two kills. It's going to be Logic and Azeal. Logic with two now, and... 
He's just going to keep pushing forward. As Soldier 76, he's able to get three. It's a great hole there from Mouse. And now coming in the next fight, they're going to have the Soldier Ultimate, Nano Boost. They're going to have the Graviton Surge as well. But something we saw yesterday, they have to be careful to Graviton against D.Va. How many times I feel like we've seen recently where the Graviton just gets eaten by the Defense Major? Too many. Just yeah. honestly too many times if you want to be one of the best teams. Um, I'm actually wondering, though, is maybe Hollywood a map that Mouse has practiced quite a bit. Maybe Dorado was the one that they didn't because they're looking completely different, like night and day here between these two maps. But we're going to see the Tactical being popped. Logic's on the high ground. going to take down Cabal, and this one's looking good. And I like how he just pushes straight through the D.Va, and he's actually able to get one more. He's going to take out Clown. So we're going to see the support taken down for the side of LDLC, and it's going to be Ube having to back up. Finzi picks up two. Now, LDLC cannot get anything going on offense this far. I like how you point out that Logic just ran past the D.Va, because he, he pretty much knew he was going to die doing that. Right. It's like, I'm running to your back line, but I'm going to get two crucial kills that will make sure we win the fight. Like, I'll sacrifice myself to win the fight and then just run back because it, it, it doesn't take time. It, it's a two-for-one trade. Yeah. It's, a, it's a better decision than to just kind of try and mow down D.Va. It's like you're not going to. I mean, even if you put up the bio, I feel like it's still kind of risky to kind of fight through it because obviously there's other damage coming in. But LDLC now getting on the point. They do have the D.Va ultimate here. And see, it's going to be a, the Graviton Surge coming in. It's going to be the D.Va ultimate coming in from LDLC. It's going to be blocked, though by a seal and it's gonna be mouse just pushing forward trying to take out diva it's gonna de-suit her get her out of her mech take her out so mouse uses the graviton surge to great effect it doesn't get eaten up by the defense matrix and they win the fight it was interesting the decision making actually in message because instead of going up to the graviton surge and like walking into it and defense matrix to protect your team he actually sat back and like self-destructed to try to get behind the enemy team of mouse forwards yeah so now you see they're actually going to switch things up meta is going to go from diva over to zarya now so now you're going to see ldlc ditch the zarya coming into this uh, ditch the uh, diva coming into this fight and now you're going to see it's going to be a whole hog nano boost coming in from the side of ldlc it's going to be Ube able to take out Asriel, and that is a huge kill they're trying to push the soldier back could push logic back, that health back, so he can't lay down the damage, and then just take everybody else out on the point. Nice hook there from Ubi, able to finish off Finzi. It's going to be just logic trying to stay alive. He gets sent for a ride. He's going to fall. LDLC should be able to take the point, unlock the payload, but not a great first offensive push. Yeah, with like 10 seconds remaining, yeah. that's not a good sign at all. And it just seems like LDLC just got fed up with being pushed around on that point. He just said, oh, you know what? Let's just do a whole hog, nano boost him, just throw him in, and just kill people left and right, and just kind of brute force this one through. And kind of trying to push it up. He's trying to get some more percent. He can see it's at 88%-ish. If he get on the high ground or just be able to match logics in terms of tactical advisors, that would put them a little bit more on equal footing. But the high ground that Mouse Force has here is of such a huge advantage. Yeah, and I believe you actually saw a hook come in there, and they're able to take out Ube. So Ube gets hooked, and then they're able to finish him off. And now you should see Mouse Force try and push LDLC back. And you see Gamiazro getting in pretty deep. He's now going to put up his shield, give Logic some free reign to lay down damage. It's going to be Logic. Backing up here, has the tank visor going to go back for that high ground. And I'm wondering if you're on the side of LGC, how do you crack this case open? Because you have an auto boost up on Burks, you have the tactical visor for Logix. Logix is actually sitting really far back, which is kind of interesting. Um, I've been hearing from a lot of the pro players that you actually want to play a little bit more aggressive, like medium range, uh, to actually do a lot more damage and be a little bit more critical to take down the backline targets. And you can see here, he's not really having the opportunity to hit anyone towards the back, but at least helps take down the tank. He does take down Clown and Lucio, and it still will be another one fight. But Granger just popped his own tactical visor. Yeah, and he's going to get a nano boost with it as well. It's going to be a sound barrier coming in from Mouseports, just trying to stay alive. The Graviton Surge as well. So they do a good job dealing with that Soldier Ultimate plus the nano boost. Uh, for a second there, I, I was really confused by what LDLC did there, Jason, because, you know, they had a few players pushed up, right? You saw Clown pushed up with Meza. They get taken out by Logic Tackvisor, and it feels like half the team pushed up, half the team pushed right. back. And then when the other half of the team, like that pushback, got back into the fight, they ended up wasting two ultimates there. Yeah, I was actually really confused why they, they popped Tactical Visor yeah. and had a boost to invest into it. It was kind of like maybe a split decision moment. It was Cabal, like, I feel like we can win this fight. Let's just go for it. Let's just make this happen. Um, and obviously that can backfire quite a bit. And now they're going to be down two big ultimates when they could have had a huge old advantage. But that's a ground to the shirts coming in from the back that pulls in so many people. Yeah, but they're not able to get anything out of it. So it's going to be, finally, it's going to be Ube getting one. He's going to be able to take out Swoosh. So the Graviton Surge does end up paying off in the end, not initially. It's going to be Finzi trying to get back towards the point. He gets swung on. He's taken out. An Earth Shatter comes in from LDLC. And it's going to be two big kills from Clanton. Make it three. Just hunting down the players on Mouse Sports. And you see it's going to be Divinius trying to get away. Uh, he finally gets away with his life. You see it's going to be Clanton now going to try and set up for this high ground. 
The thing is, though, even with the that was a five-man ground to search, that wasn't as clean of a fight as it should be when you hit something like that. LDC lost too many men, and now with just 10 seconds remain, they have to make something happen with neither side having no twist, but Burks finally getting his nano boost up. Yeah, and we'll see if the nano boost can prove well for Mouse Sports, and it's going to be a steal that gets the nano boost on Reinhardt. It's going to be Uwe opening up yet with another good hook and kill on the swoosh, and a steal. He gets put to sleep, just hanging out here. It's going to be Finzi just trying to defend this. They're going to invest the sound barrier into this as well, Mouse Sports, and it does not work out. LDLC wipes the floor. They get the checkpoint. They got lucky on timing there, too, I think, with Olpersen. Just the fact that Clanton had his tactical visor up and they had Cabal with his uh, nano boost to kind of match up to Burix. That could have worked out any better for them, but still, the. Like, if you compare this to Dorado, they're going so slow. They're struggling quite a bit here against Mouse Force's defensive setup, and maybe the Zarya pick alone has really caused them a little bit of problems. Maybe they're more than happy to work around the D.Va, but Fincy and the Zarya's been able to do a lot, a lot of work. Yeah, I think it could be Mouse just being a little bit more comfortable, you know, in this kind of setup, running the Zarya instead of the D.Va. They just know how to play around this a little bit better, and C. Clanton just putting down some shots, trying to break this, the shield of a seal, and you see it's going to be the Graviton Surge coming in from Mouse Force. It's going to be D.Va pushing straight through. It's going to be Clanton actually picking up one. And now it's going to be LDLC picking up two kills. So it's going to be Mouse that invests the Graviton in. And they don't get anything for it. It's going to be Ube popping his whole hog, pushing straight forward, knocking players back. And this is huge for LDLC. They may be able to shake this last point. Oh, they're going to need it. They're definitely going to need it here. They have a stab, they have a tap device. So they're pushing into their spawn here. I think someone finally got on the payload. That has to be Divinius. Urshar's going to be coming in, but it doesn't really do much because he gets taken out immediately here. And the payload is still contested. Yeah, and Clanton pops his. Soldier ultimate, he's able to get three kills there, and it's going to be Ube making his way back towards the payload, but Clanton there towards the end goes absolutely huge. Here comes the D.Va ultimate. And you're going to have just one player just stalling out on it. It's going to be Logic switching over to Sombra. He gets taken out. So LDLC completes the map. I believe it was like with 0.2 seconds left or something six, like that. 6.2. 6.2, yeah. okay. Yeah, yeah. But finishing so with time left is huge for them because it means they're going to have, uh, well, obviously a little bit of a slight lead when it comes to the second or potentially third half if we go into it. But also get extra time allotted later on. So now Mouse Sports, the pressure's on them, I guess. The fact that they didn't get first point in Dorado, but they put up a good defense on Hollywood has to lead us to believe that they're going to be able to perform a lot better on this map. But it comes down to, like, what are they going to run? Are they going to stick with the, the Zarion Finsty that they did last half? Are they going to go try, or try to go for D.Va yet again and push up aggressively? Um, even what's LDLC going to respond with? Are we going to see maybe Zenyatta come out again? Yeah, well, you figure Mouse uh, definitely puts up a better offensive effort than on Dorado. This, uh, although be it, it was not their map pick in the, you know, veto phase, you know, the, mm. the map picks and bans. This was their pick, though, to come over to Hollywood for the map number two. So. So uh, LDLC up 1-0 in the series. They complete the map on the first half on offense. It'll be Maus fighting for their lives here on the offensive side of things. Uh, defensive side for LDLC, you'll actually see they'll bring out the Zenyatta. So they'll be running with Zenyatta and Ana here. Okay, so I actually like that. I, I still like the Zenyatta Ana a lot, especially when it comes to like hybrid payload maps. When you know the area you're fighting in and you don't necessarily need speed to actually get away from an attack on like a dynamic kind of payload where where Dorado shows. Um, but for the side of Mouse Sports, they're going back to the D.Va. So they're not running Fincy on Zarya again. I wonder how long they stick with that, though. Yeah, I, I actually I wonder mean, as well. Like, D.Va can't cleanse a Discord orb. Zarya can't, obviously, you know, on, on cooldown. But um, Zarya does just a ton more damage in terms of, like, the beam. She can counter 1v1 at a D.Va. She can use the Groucho Search, which is, which is a lot more consistent in terms of being impactful in a team fight than a D.Va ultimate. Well, the only thing I can think of is that, you know, LDLC on the on the side for them, you know, Clanton was so effective with the tack visors during that one that maybe they felt they needed the D.Va to really maybe. just get up in his face and really be a nuisance. It'll be Mouse Sports here on offense. We'll kick things off with Finzi running the D.Va. So we talked a little bit about it. They ran Zarya on defense, felt a little bit more oh, comfortable no. with that. Oh, and that is a big hook there coming in for the side of LDLC and see if they can push forward. So Ubi's going to be able to take on Asriel, but now you see it's going to be Mouse. How, how do you up. hook it? I don't know how that happens. How do you hook in a Reinhardt and not kill him? And then he charges out, puts your Diva out of position. And then and then you, and then on the side for LDLC, you actually get a pick out of that. I don't. That should never happen. But I guess that's just the power of the Discord Orb. Yeah, I guess I mean, so. I mean, I get that and the healing that you're able to put out. Yeah, uh, And I guess, you know, when their Ryan charged in, I guess it gave Ube a chance to land a hook. And you see the hook trying to come in through the side of the shield there for a swoosh. Now we'll see. Mouse can get anything going here. It's going to be Mede knocked out of his mech, and now you see two kills coming in for LDLC. So it's going to be Mouse still not able to get anything going here on offense. It, it amazed me how aggressive Mesomorphosis has been on this Reinhardt, too, because on the last half, 
when he was Graviton Surge, he would charge out of it to try to kill someone. Here, when they're pushing in towards his, towards his front line, he said instead of pulling the shield up, which he still had a little bit of charge left, he charges and yeah. tries to get aggressive. Like, he really wants to be in their face. He is really trying to mimic the way NIP are playing triple tank. And I feel like with the Zenyatta Discord, you're able to do that a little bit better because, you know, the Reinhardt can charge in a little bit. Another first pick here. Yeah, that was the hook is... into a sleep dart into everyone just bursting him down. Yeah, and, and this is really, you know, it's, it's difficult for Mouse because now you just can't, you're so staggered. You're just waiting and waiting for teammates to come off of the spawn every time. And look at the ultimates that LDLC has. LDLC hasn't had to use ultimates one No, fight. they've yeah. just used the Roadhog hook. The, the hook has been just so effective. Ube set a fantastic series thus far on Roadhog. Now we'll see. It's going to be very difficult. Mouse needs to come into this next fight, just hoping to burn some ultimates on the side of LDLC. Yeah, like they shouldn't even look to win this fight. They should just look to burn, hopefully, four of those ultimates if they possibly can, and save their own coming into the next fight. But I don't know if they're going to be going that route. Like they realize the pressure's on for them. They have less than two minutes now to finish this off. They got Logics on the high ground to do the Nano Boost Tactical Visor if they want to go for that. But Cabal and the Transcendence is going to be huge. We have to see some sort of Bowder Grenade to prevent this healing. Yeah, and you're going to see uh, Burex. He's going to give his Soldier the Nano Boost up top. You're going to see Clanton. He's going to get the Nano Boost Soldier Ultimate as well. And it's going to be the side of LDLC holding strong here. Clanton doing an excellent job on his 76. They're able to take out Logix and Burex. And I don't think Logix actually gets anything with his tack visor during that. Nope. So what happened was, and this is this is why it's so hard to play Ana sometimes against the Zenyatta, and why Zenyatta can be good against Ana, is that Burex, uh, about a grenade swoosh, who was being attacked in towards the backside, and with that down, it means he doesn't have the healing debuff on anyone for LLDLC, which means the transcendence is going to be even more effective, and there's no way that Logix can take anyone down with this tactical visor through that. Yeah, and here comes Maus getting on to the point. They're going to use a whole hog. They're going to use a D.Va ultimate. A D.Va ultimate comes in from the side of LDLC. It's going to be Mede getting two with his. Ube picks up another one. Logic's trying to fight for his life on the point. He's going to fall. Swoosh, the only one up for Mouse Sports. He's going to get Discord Orb. He's just taking a ton of damage on the point, trying to die as fast as possible because he needs to get back with his team. It's going to be Mouse Sports now switching over to the Z Zarya from D.Va. So it's going to be Finzi giving up on D.Va. Now going left, over though? to Zarya with only 40 seconds left. Now Mesmorphosis has an Earth Shatter. Both teams have the Earth Shatter to go with, but if LDLC can land a big Earth Shatter here, that could decide this game. I mean, Finzi did use his self-destruct, so why not kind of change in order to use the ultimate? But there's no real chance you're going to get anything going here. If the Earth Shatter comes in out of both teams, that transcends his backup for Cabal. Oh, but it's going to be Mesmorphosis getting nano boosted, and he's actually able to take out Finzi, and you see the Transcendence coming in. It's going to be LDLC taking the fight to Mouse Sports, pushing them so far back, Jason. With nine seconds left, it doesn't look like Mouse can get anywhere near the point. I don't think at all. I think if they switch to Tracer at this rate, they can pull, uh, possibly pull this off in LDLC. It looks like they're going to take it at 2-0. Yeah, it's going to be, uh, I believe, Divinius over on the top. He actually gets onto the point as Lucio there for a split second. It's going to be Mouse Sports dropping here to LDLC. LDLC taking our first match of the day in commanding fashion. Yeah, that was... That was definitely one-sided, considering they finished both maps with extra time remaining, and Mouse Sports was not able to capture a single checkpoint. You have to look back and wonder, why did we not see the Zhong Tower? A map that they've already proven that they're, they've been able to win against one of the best teams in North America. Yeah, I think if you're Mouse, you kind of look back at this series, and it's like, well, I think, one, you kind of guess, like, well, why didn't we go to Lijang? And then I also think, two, you're kind of questioning, like, if things were working out a little bit better when you had the Zarya instead of the D.Va, like, right. why did you not stay right. with the Zarya? Yeah, you, you, you kind of have to wonder, like, is that maybe an experience on land? Just, like, kind of second-guessing yourself. Like, should we try the D.Va one more time? It didn't work on Dorado, but maybe we should switch things up. And, well, as we saw, it just really didn't for them. It's unfortunate, but we know they're still, like, individually strong players. I think just maybe it takes them a little bit more time to get used to the meta now it's kind of played. Yeah, and LDLC looks like a very strong team. Completely different than yesterday. I would be uh, pretty 